Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to a fun tutorial where I am going to be modeling a stuffed animal. I'm going to model UV map it and texture it so it should be fun. If you're new to this channel, I post 3D tutorials on a weekly basis including Maya, Zebra, Substance Painter and more. So if that is your type of thing, please consider subscribing. So what I did the other day was actually uh, created this image. I was conflicted because I really wanted to model a stuffed animal, but I wasn't sure which to choose. So I put this image in social media and I asked, which one should I model texture next? Thanks to everybody who voted. I accrued all of your votes and the results are that the majority want me to model this cute little stuffed dinosaur. The second one was in fact a little doggo, so I might, if I have the opportunity, I might go back and do that one. And the rest got a little bit less. They still got some votes because they're cute, but um, the dinosaur definitely won the day. So we are going to be modeling that today. So we're going to model UV map texture and everything. It's going to be a little bit of a series. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, hopefully you guys already know this, but you need to create a project. I already have. If you don't know how to do that, let's go to file project window. Um, click new and then you can type in your project name and make sure you have a place for it. I've already created one called stuffed animals. So I'm going to go to file set project and look for that in my 3D projects. As you can see, I have a ton of stuff and there it is set and I'm ready to go. Let's bring in a reference image. I'm going to go to create free image plane and over here to the right, we have our attributes image name. Click on that little folder. And I already have a reference folder with all the cute little guys, all these cute little things. I even thought about doing a cookie, but let's go ahead and bring in the dino as reference. Press W to move this up, bring it back, scale it up. And that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and go to my channel box. You can click on control A, select that image plane. And I am going to click on the display, create a new layer and assign a selected object so that I can turn it on and off. But the important part is to double click on this. R stands for reference and no, I will not accidentally select it. You can see I have my displays here. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. So go to display, heads up display. I can turn off the poly count and actually while I'm there, I don't need a cube. I know which way is up and down. So I got rid of that, uh, the cube. Not only that, I have this little icon down here to make sure I don't, I don't get lost. All right, let's go ahead and get started with this little guy. So I'm going to start off by building his um, his body, then his head, and then the details. Whenever you guys are going to start modeling, you may think, oh, you know, why don't you just use a sphere and then go from there? Um, it is true, I can, but I'm going to uh, start at the bottom, which is, looks more like a cylinder, and then start building it up and up and up. So uh, let's grab a cylinder. And the first thing I'm going to do is turn off my cap. So subdivision cap to zero. And I also like to start a little bit lower poly because 20 is a little bit of a bunch of polygons. So I'm going to go ahead and click on 12. I can always increase it. I am going to go to the front view and I'm going to do my best to match my reference. So I'm going to scale this down and start off at the bottom. Since I don't have an actual orthographic view of front side, I only have a three quarter view. I'm going to be making some guesses. Let's right click, go to vertex, select the top vertices, and I'm going to scale uniformly. Maybe scale this one a little bit too. And let's go to two panels because I really just need this one as well as this one to make sure I don't screw anything up. And that looks good. Let's go to faces, grab that top face and extrude. We're going to be doing the method of extrude and scale, extrude, extrude and scale, which is basically <laughs> the concept of modeling and any 3D program. Let's see, I'm already starting to see that I'm not getting the right distance here. So let's go ahead and double click on these edges and just kind of scale it. I want to make sure it looks chunky, just like the little dinosaur. You can always press the number three to see how it looks. Doesn't look like much. Let's move on. Let's go ahead and grab the top face again. Extrude. Let's lift. Again, it kind of gets a little chunkier. So let's go ahead and chunk it up a little bit. Control E, lift. And now we're starting to see that it's starting to curl a little bit. So I'm going to just kind of rotate it just slightly, I'm trying to match my reference here. So the theory between behind modeling is this kind of, I almost, almost feel like it's the same thing. After you do this for a while, you start to see the, the similarities, which is extrude, scale, move, make sure it matches your reference. You know, that's, uh, that's kind of like the basics behind it. Nothing too fancy. Okay. So I have the little leg. 
I'm not a fan of the bottom, so let me go ahead and grab this and extrude. By this, I'm just gonna scale and then maybe just bring it down a little bit to give it that round corner. And since I'm here, I might as well just use the multi-cut. So you can shift right click and here's the multi-cut. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of go across. So if I go across like this, I have now quads and that's basically what I want. So I'm gonna go through here and just click, click, press enter, click, click. Again, I'm just cleaning up my topology. I wanna make sure it looks nice. Even if no one sees the bottom of it, it just makes me feel better, I guess. <laughs> All right, cool. We have a leg. Let's go to object mode, press the number three. Okay, if you use your imagination, I can almost see a dinosaur. Let's go ahead and move on. It's so cute. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and extrude and we're gonna lift. This is gonna be starting the body. Now, the body is of course halfway and I'm gonna bring this a little lower cause he actually is very bulbous. And he's basically a really big sphere, but what I'm gonna do is model half of his body and then I'm gonna duplicate it to the other side. Now for reference, I am going to bring a sphere since it is a kind of like a stocky sphere. So I'm gonna just use this as reference to make sure I keep my sphere shape. And I'm gonna kind of, he's kind of like a crushed sphere. And what I can do also is click on or go to shading x-ray and I'll be able to see a little bit more of the bulba shape through the reference. So again, I can kind of crush him a little bit and that should give me a little bit of an idea of what that's gonna look like. I'm gonna create a new layer. This is going to be my sphere. Again, I don't wanna select it, so I'm just going to um, I can actually click it once to go to transparency and you can see that it now it's more like a transparent sphere. So again, I'm using this to help me make sure that I'm creating the right shape. All right, let's go ahead and continue on. I'm going to extrude, lift. And I am going to double click on this edge here and just kind of move it a little bit. And I am going to start deleting the inner faces. And I'm also going to erase the top face. And now I'm just going to be selecting edges to extrude. So I'm going to double click on the edges. Oh, how interesting that it does that. Okay, let's see. Uh, so I'm just shift double clicking. And now I'm going to extrude again, lift. Scale a little bit. Making sure, let me make it more bulbous. Gonna double click on this one, make him a little bit more bulbous too. Again, I'm just using my sphere as a reference. There we go. Extrude again, press W so you can do world space and I'm gonna scale in a little bit and move to the side. Again, I'm just following the reference. Control E, lift, scale in a little bit, push it in. Probably have to erase those inner faces. I'm looking at my sphere here, making sure that I'm crushing it in a little bit again, using my reference. One more time, extrude, pressing R for uh, world space, lift and scale. And nudging it forward. Okay, and now I'm going to do a little bit of modeling when it comes to making sure that it's following the reference sphere here and again i'm just shift double clicking and then moving this one back i'm going to undo that because i'm going to deselect that top one and just kind of move this one back and it looks like i'm going to just have to do a little bit of that modeling so let's go ahead and just nudge these there we go And I grab this one that's sticking out a little bit. Again, I'm trying to make sure I keep that bulbous shape. And after working for a while on 3D, you kind of know that you're supposed to get like an arc as you're looking at this. So it's important to just kind of review your model in all angles to make sure that everything's fitting appropriately. And we have this one, just want to make sure it's nice and smooth here. 
And then I'm going to do the same thing for this one. So I'm going to bring this one out. I'm going to grab this one out as well. And bring this one out. So he's going to be nice and round. All right, let's press the number three. <laughs> that doesn't look like much, but hopefully you guys are seeing the magic. Okay, let's see what's next. So I want to duplicate this to the other side. So to do that, we need to mirror it. So the best way to mirror something is you want to make sure that the pivot point is in the center. So because my character is a little, I'm modeling based on this three quarters reference, you'll notice that my edges are not exactly uh, flat. So when I mirror it, it's not going to be perfect. So I'm going to kind of fix my edges a little bit. So I'm going to click here and then shift double click on the other side. And of course it went this way, which is not what I wanted. So I'm going to try selecting this side, shift double clicking on the other side. That's it's hoping for the best, but never mind. Okay. I'm going to hold down shift double click, and then you're just going to kind of shift double click and just going to go all the way through. And then I'm going to press R and I am going to crush him flat. This is going to help me mirror it. Uh, it's just going to be easier to mirror. Wait, let me just move these to make sure they're similar in height. Okay. Once I do that, I'm going to hit the letter D on my keyboard and move this pivot point to about the middle of the character, which is the edge of this section here. Press D again. Then I'm ready to mirror. Let's go to mesh mirror and let's go to the options. We have a couple of options here that we can play with. Um, we can choose Y, we can choose world. I'm actually going to choose object and then apply. And you're going to notice that I did not, I chose the wrong one. So that's okay. That's why these little box is here for. So I can say, maybe it's not Y, maybe it's positive Y. Nope. I'm never, I'm never very good at guessing these things. Let's do negative X. Okay. That's better. So there is negative X. And you can see that it's merging my borders. So I'm going to say do not merge borders. So you can see by using the object, it mirrors it where the pivot point was. But if I choose world, you'll notice that I have a pivot point there that's based on the world. And then I can pull it and separate it myself. So that gives me a little bit more control over what this character is going to look like. So it's up to you how far you want this to go. I'm going to crush it just a little bit. It is giving me a couple of triangles, which I'm going to clean up. But in general, this should be pretty good for his little body. Let's go ahead and hit object mode. We can hit the number three on the keyboard and you can see that he now has a little bit of that cute little shape. If I go to three quarter view, it should look a little bit more like his little body. Wink. All right, let's clean this up. I'm gonna press the number one. And since this is a triangle, I can actually delete this one, which will make this into a quad which is a great way of lowering your topology. Let me hide my reference image here. Um, let's see, what else can I do here? I'm not a fan of this little triangle. So what I'm gonna do is go to merge vertices, target weld tool, and then I can just kind of click and drag. And then I can drag all of these together. You just have to be very careful because I'm trying to merge them all together. Oop, there we go. So that gets rid of that triangle. And again, I can grab this edge and either keep it or delete it, depending on if you want to keep quads or not. I'm going to go in and just kind of round things out a little bit more. And same thing up here. I can go ahead and delete this edge. It looks like there is a vertex here. I just saw that. So we have to be very careful. Delete that vertex first and then go ahead and delete that. All right, cool. We have a little bit of a body. If you want to do a little bit more shaping, you are we can. Uh, for example, if you feel like one side should, maybe the leg should be a little closer together, you know, we can go ahead and bring them close, slightly closer together. Um, just go ahead and just bring this a little closer. Again, press the number three, make sure everything's looking good. And I notice that the back is a little bit more rounded. So a little bit more, 
like this part's a little bit more lower and this part's a little higher. And so I can use what's called soft select. So I'm going to click on the, this area, the front, click on the letter B and you're going to see this little gradient. I'm going to double click on my move tool and, or my, um, get my move tool. And over here at the bottom, we have soft select, which is where you can control the gradient. So if I want to, I can actually nudge this down a little bit and maybe push it in if you want. And then this one, I can grab that one and bring it up. You can also grab the back of the legs and then push these back. Now, if you feel like the gradient's too big, you can control it using the fall off radius. As you can see, it doesn't affect as much if the numbers are lower. You can also use B, middle mouse and drag. Whoops. B, middle mouse and drag. This will give you a fall off, uh, interactive fall off. And then I can do that. And then I can also bring these back. So that looks a little bit more like the shape of the little dinosaur. <laughs> it's fun. Okay, moving on. Uh, click on the letter B on your keyboard for boy and let's go ahead and not a fan of this pinch. So I'm going to delete these edges and uh, get rid of this vertice here and then shift right click multi cut and let's just go ahead and convert this into a quad. So I'm just going to go across. So again, I'm just cleaning up my mesh. I prefer um, having quads so I don't have any pinching and it's a little bit easier and more predictable if these guys are laid out in quads. So something like so. Move this over here up. Press three. Happier with that. I'm debating to do the same thing over here. Hmm. You can also do control delete. Control delete will also delete the vertices. And I might as well do it because I might as well make it all even. Press enter, press enter, and press enter. All right. So to make this rounded, I'm going to double click and there's this fancy tool over here where you can make a square into a circle. And now suddenly I now have a nice circle, which is great, which is going to be my neck, my little guy's neck. So it looks like his neck is a little bit more pushed forward. So I am going to push this forward. And I'm also going to grab these guys and push these forward. <laughs> so cute. Okay. Let me just bring, I'm just trying to make it a little bit more rounded because I want to make sure it looks rounded. And I just think this is really cute. Okay. Moving on because I'm just stuck on the body. Let's move on to the head. So you can either model the head on your own, like separately, but I'm going to go ahead and continue modeling this again. I'm using my reference. I want to make sure I capture the the neck and I kind of squash it in a little bit. And I might just move this here and let's go ahead and extrude control E press W to get world space and so this is going to be very similar to a sphere, except the difference is that it's got a little bit of a pucker. So let's extrude again, lift. Again, I'm just using my reference. So I'm scaling and moving uh, uniformly. The biggest thing is to make sure you're scaling uniformly. That's really important. Control E, press W, lift. Control E, again, W, lift, bring that in. Control E, W, lift and scale uniformly. Control E, W, lift again, almost at the top. Control E, W, lift, and let's go ahead and shut this down. All right, let's see what that looks like on this side. Not too shabby, it actually kind of looks like the reference. I'm just gonna do a couple of little things such as grabbing the front faces click on the letter B and just kind of move it forward just a little bit just to make sure it actually looks like the dinosaur. Press the number three on your keyboard. Looks like this area here can be pushed up a tiny bit. Make sure the bottom is in fact rounded. So I'm actually going to grab some vertices here and just kind of move them down my, well actually, Keep that soft select kind of helps with the organic feel of it. Grab these as well and just kind of lift these forward. Oh, 
Yeah, and I'm just going to nudge these a little bit just because of like clean topology. And let's take a look at it. There we go. We got a little dinosaur head. <laughs> this part looks a little funny, so I'm going to grab these and just kind of make sure it's a little bit more rounded. Let's see. Maybe it's a little bit too... Looks like it's sticking up its butt. Let me. There we go. All right. I feel like this side is a little bit square. Let me just even out the vertices a little bit. And again, the only thing I'm doing is kind of eyeballing it and feeling that it's a little quadratic. So I'm just going to bring these vertices in so that it looks a little bit more rounded. That's all. It's all kind of like a visual um, thing. Well, it's not exactly like the reference, but it's pretty close. There's a couple of things I could tweak here and there, such as the leg can be a little bit more flushed flat. So there's a lot of little things I can kind of tweak. But in general, I think hopefully you guys are getting the idea of how to model this little guy. All right, you know what I haven't done in a while? Save, so let's save. All right, next is going to be the little arms. Now, again, you can extrude, but since this is a simple little object, I'm just gonna go ahead and use a cylinder. I'm gonna go in and decrease the subdivision axis by middle mouse and dragging on the word. And I am gonna give myself a little bit of um, subdivision height and then change this to a zero. I'm going to grab the face and again click on the letter B on your keyboard so you can um, scale so you can get a quick little it, it affects all the geometry in a gradient fashion. Once you're done you can always click on the letter B again and you can you know make the adjustments from there as well. So this is kind of like little nubs so I'm just going to go ahead and like this, rotate this, place them, should probably be looking at reference here, there they are, right here, let me just go ahead and rotate it, oops, it's actually in the geometry, but I, at least I got the idea where they're going to be found around here. Gonna grab some edges and scale in. Let me go ahead and isolate select. Grab that interface and scale that one in. And I'm gonna delete it because I don't need it. And then I'm gonna fix this. Again, I'm not a big fan of bad topology, so let's go ahead and just go across. And then if you like, you can grab an edge and lift so it helps with the roundness of the object. Looks like a little football. Okay, American football. Let's put it all together. Here we go. Got a little nub. Maybe make it a little bigger so it's noticeable. Cool. I'm going to hit the letter D and move the pivot point to around here because I want to duplicate this and then flip it to the other side. And actually, let me freeze the transformations. It'll be a lot easier for me to flip it. So freeze those transformations. Move it. If I go negative one on the X, it will actually mirror it, which is really nice and makes it very convenient. Little dinosaur. Let me bring these out a little bit. It would be nice if I actually had reference from the front and everything, because it's a little hard to tell. Do you think maybe the dinosaur's arms are a little closer to the front? It feels like they should be closer to the front. I am making stylistic decisions. I'm going to create a floor. I can feel like it's grounded. It's not perfect, but it's okay. Scale it a little bit. Okay, let's work on the behind. Now again, you can grab 
the geometry and extrude, which I think that's what I am going to do. So let's go ahead and grab some back faces. pretty big size tail so I'm going to extrude press W and just kind of bring it back Oop, press number one to make sure we're doing okay and I'm also want to uh, round it so again I've got these faces selected I'm going to click on this button which is going to force it to round which is nice makes my life easier because this is a rounded little be little tail bring it down control E it's gonna just help bring this down a little bit more scale it down Control E, scale it down some more, bring it down. And then I'm just going to rotate it. Control E again and bring it down again. Okay, let me make some adjustments here. Uh, let's uh, insert some edges so that I can make this a little bit more rounded and also more like a little fatter and then let's grab the back faces here or edges I'm sorry hello vertices and just kind of nudge them a little bit so a little bit more rounded if we ever see the back of the little dinosaur is not so cubic so I'm gonna go in and just kind of tweak these so that it looks a little bit more cubic or more circular press the number three on your keyboard and see what that looks like cute 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 I think maybe it's a little too high here at the back, so I'm going to grab some vertices and just going to bring these down a little bit. Press the number three. Let's clean this up a little bit. I want to make sure this looks rounded and soft, so I'm just going to go in and just round these out a little bit. All right, cool. There she is. He, she, I can't tell. Can you guys tell? <laughs> okay. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys a really handy trick, which you can find in the modeling toolkit. The modeling toolkit is right up here at the top right. And if you select your mesh and click on quad draw, you can actually use what's called relax. So if I hold down shift and I kind of draw on my character, you'll notice that the mesh averages out and this is known as relaxing will actually help smooth out your mesh so that it the topology is a little bit cleaner a little bit nicer and a little bit more even so this is a nice way of of uh, making sure that your topology is smooth and it flows well together um, and i highly recommend it so here i am just kind of going in and just relaxing if you want you can actually grab you can edit using this mode so if you want you can grab those vertices but I'm just gonna go in and just kind of relax the tail a little bit and a little bit around the torso and the legs which helps smooth out the mesh all right let me make sure I did it on the left side as well or the right side of the character oh I got a hole I gotta fill that up got a little guy right there and then you can press a number three and you'll notice that this this the geometry is a lot cleaner and smoother and the topology is a little bit more proper so that being said let's get out of quadra click that off and now we're back to regular mode and then i'm going to go ahead and go back into the channel box let's go to object mode and then press number three great there it is maybe i should put this little arms inside the body pink Kind of cute. It'll be cuter when it doesn't have a hole in the top. Let's fill in that hole. I'm going to go ahead and double click on these edges. And there's a fancy tool just for that. And it is called Fill Hole. So under Mesh, Fill Hole. So again, you can go ahead and grab the Multi Cut tool and then make your cuts. You can go across. Press enter and then just kind of, oops, go in and just kind of make your cuts so that you have nice topology. And I'm going to go across and voila. So with that, let's go ahead and 
going to grab that one vertice, click on the letter B, and just kind of help move that up a little bit so it's not... There you go. Cool. Okay, so how are we going to do these little spikes? Let's see, how should we do this? So, um, it's a relatively simple shape, so let's go ahead and grab a cube. And it's always nice to just kind of stick to simple shapes. I'm going to go ahead and scale it a little bit flatter, and I'm also going to give myself some divisions. So with this, I'll be able to create some, um, let's get some height here. Great. Let's go ahead and rotate this 90, uh, 45 degrees, something like this, and then we can round it. So we can grab some vertices. I have soft select on, so I can kind of bring it in. Let me go B, middle mouse, and drag. So I can just grab a little bit of that selection, just kind of bring it down, grab these guys on the side, and double click on this. Scale it in, click on the letter B so I can just kind of round it out myself. There we go, something like that. And give it some width and place it in the mesh. Maybe rotate it slightly more. Grab these vertices over here on the corners so I can just kind of nudge them down. Again, I can use soft select to kind of mold it in. Soft select is great if you're trying to use organic mod a little bit of organic modeling. Okay. Let me add an insert edge here. So shift right click, insert edge, and go ahead and bring an edge. I'm going to go ahead and scale that up just a little bit. So when I press the number three, I'm going to get a nice soft select. Maybe widen this up. And to be fair, I don't need all this mesh at the bottom. So let me just grab some faces and delete. Double click and I'm going to scale them flat. All right, let me put the back. Rotate, place it in here. Cool. Duplicate, control D, let's rotate and bring these down. Duplicate and bring these down and rotate. So I'm just duplicating and rotating. If they're not wide enough, I can of course make them slightly wider. I'm gonna double click on this and instead of world space, I'm gonna choose object space. And actually, it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna reset my tool and then just gonna use what I have. Okay, duplicate that one, bring it down. Just kind of following my reference image. Duplicate again. Keep working on this. Dupli duplicate, control D. scale them down a little bit and then duplicate again and then <laughs> this one's going to be tiny because it's at the tip of the tail and there we go all right there it is the cute little dinosaur not convinced by this portion here so let me just make it a little more rounded same thing for this one i'm going to grab the vertice again i'm using soft select by clicking on the letter B on my keyboard and just kind of bring them in a little bit just to make it a little bit more rounded. And let's see, proportion wise, I might want to make these just slightly bigger. Slightly higher. And maybe this one can be slightly more rounded by grabbing up here and just kind of bringing it down. All right, there it is, the cute little dinosaur. With this one, it's just a little circle, so I can use just a regular plane. 
Or if I want depth in it, which I believe I'll need, I'm just going to use a circle or a sphere. Let's go ahead and div uh, reduce my divisions here by 10 because this is going to be small. Grab some faces, get rid of the soft select, delete half of it. Gonna center that pivot and crush it. Let's bring it to the front. It's tiny, 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 tiny. Tiny little eye. Let's see. It's around here. And it's about this scale. So now I'm gonna place it onto the there we go. Maybe and then press F to focus so I can round it out a little bit more. And I know these things are a little flatter, so I'm going to grab them and just kind of bring this out a little bit. Let me double click on this and just kind of scale it in. There we go. Boink. Great. So what I'm going to do is freeze the transformations. I'm going to try a trick. I'm going to group it and I am going to duplicate the group control D and then I'm going to grab the scale X and flip it to the other side. Oh, that did not work. And then I'm just going to scoot this over here. Okay, there's another one. <laughs> it's a little skewed, but I think that gives him the, the plushy feel. So there we go, guys. That is how you model this little plushy character. Let me just grab everything, delete the history, freeze the transformation, center the pivot, and this is going to be my ground plane. And I am going to grab all of these guys except for the plane, control G, just to make sure that I have it all in a group. And this is going to be my dino toy. GRP for group. Delete my unnecessary nodes. This one's the ground plane. And then save as. All right, so the model is basically done. The next part of the video tutorial is going to be to UV map it and then of course texture it and light it, render it. So hopefully you guys found this helpful. Let me know by leaving a comment below. We covered a few tools. And of course, there's always areas where we we can improve upon it. But hopefully you guys saw the way that you can easy, easily create this little cute dinosaur. Please like and subscribe. That is your message to me, letting me know that you guys like these type of videos and you want to see more. So please like, subscribe, and of course, share my videos so you can share this video with other artists just like you if you feel like it would help them out. Um, don't forget to take a look at academicphoenixplus.com where you can find free downloads such as free 3D tutorials, models, textures, and more. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. Again, thank you so much for spending the time with me. Keep creating and I will see you in the next video when we UV map and texture this little dinosaur. All right, I will see you next time.